What is up guys? Welcome back to Still Slaps Music Reviews. Today we have uh, on deck J. Cole's KOD. Three years later, we're taking a little bit of a throwback review today, doing things a little bit differently. Um, as you guys know, three years ago, uh, today, April 20th, KOD dropped. Um, this was one of the uh, more anticipated albums, obviously, from Cole. Uh, Cole, his fan base speaks for itself. A lot of his work in his catalog is considered a uh, class. If you guys are tuning in for the first time, be sure to leave a like, be sure to leave a comment, um, and be sure to subscribe because we got more reviews coming. Uh, today, like I said, we're getting into this album review. I thought this would be interesting to kind of go back and uh, really listen, re, uh, re familiarize myself. Um, I am a Cole listener. I, I'm pretty, pretty up to date with Cole's catalog. Um, I first started listening to Cole, I want to say, uh, really seriously around the 2015, 16, 17, uh, those years, started to get a little bit into Cole's catalog. And this album, I feel like, in my opinion, uh, this album is a strong, is a strong contender for myself personally up there with uh, Cole's projects that really speak to me personally. Back in 2018, when I listened to this album, when it when it dropped, I personally uh, was going through quite a bit. Um, it was a it was a difficult time to say the least for myself. Uh, I'm 26 now, uh, so three years ago I was uh, 23 years old, and um, it, it, things life was a little bit better for myself. Um, obviously, compared to now with the pandemic and everything that's changed drastically um this album definitely it, it came in a very very hot year for music um as we know there was a lot of great albums that came out in 2018 our hip-hop was a very very strong year um it, not to mention obviously the the uh the hip-hop uh quote-unquote music beefs that came out during that time from machine gun kelly to eminem uh to drake and push a t it was a very very big year to start off for album slappers i have listed photograph the cutoff atm kevin's heart brackets once an attic interlude friends and window pane so those are about eight uh eight tracks for me that really stand out as album slappers for this album for photograph for me photograph it definitely when you look at the lyrical content in photograph the track still stands to this day um 2018 it, it, like i said there was a there was a big you know, social media had, had been around by this time. So, you know, with social media, you had uh, you had this concept where what Cole took from this approach in this track, I think when he's when he wrote when he wrote it really was talking about those insecurities that a lot of young men and women face um, to this day. Actually, you can you can say that there's a bit of a there's a war with social media there's a huge war with social media in the way uh it can be received um there's a huge war with the uh whether or not you know it, it's really necessary um and you know it, it's one of those things where if you're an artist you really do have to find yourself um find yourself finding that balance and creativity and photograph kind of really spoke more to more of the infatuation through the digital uh through the digital era uh that we are in um i know myself personally this track definitely did hit um around that time i want to say i want to say well actually i would say even more so now from myself personally i feel like photograph speaks very very loud volumes the album dropped and i listened to this track i did think about myself um you know obviously as a 23 year old um it's not really you know you're kind of you know your 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 experiences with you know females you know uh dealing with you know the approach dealing with all of that uh kid you you kind of found yourself in my personal opinion from my experience you found yourself having to deal with this uh kind of complex uh social media definitely presented itself to have that complex that young men have to deal with um especially if you're if your weak point is not talking 
you're talking to women, you know, in person. You have this uh, this asset of social media that really does uh, get into this kind of tunnel vision of uh, when it comes down to your uh, association with women, you know, kind of really contriving, contriving the reality that um, is portrayed through through social media, you know, Instagram being big for a lot of uh, a, a lot of people you don't know. I think that speaks to Cole's message even louder, uh, louder today. Um, you, you, there's a growing rise with individuals who have a hard time um, and uh, just really get caught up in this false sense of uh, duality when you're talking about dealing with, you know, the, the conflict that is uh, what we are considering digital love. And I think that Cole really spoke to that really well in photographs. So on the cutoff, um, I feel like with this record, Cole, I think this was a very, very good um, way to way to experiment with Cole's alt alter ego that he introduced, Kill Edward. Um, that alter ego with that voice manipulation that Cole put on for the cutoff, I think that it was very fitting to Kill Edward's character and Cole trying to portray what Kill Edward was really about, um, about uh, uh, the difficulties that Kill, uh, Kill Edward had to face because of his substance abuse and um, the way his attitude is, the way his his viewpoint is in life. This was really risky because when you listen to it um, uh, on top of that beat, some may argue that 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 the that the beat and the way. Cole, you know, experimented with that. It doesn't really mesh well for the ear, but I'm kind of split with that. I give this a lot of props because, uh, like I said, I just really give props to Cole's experimentation with trying to uh, portray this alter ego and trying to, um, at the same time, portray his real uh, his real side. Um, as we hear on verse one, where Cole's talking about making that change in dealing with certain individuals because of you know personality flaws coming out and people using him uh because of his status in the fame this track was a great balance of uh cole like i said introducing that side of kill edward who you know is is uh wrapped up in you know the uh the negativity more of the negativity and having that balance of um, having that balance of, like I said, the real, the real side of Cole, the real person that J. Cole is in, um, addressing how he needed to really reevaluate his circle. ATM. ATM to me is a very, very, um, is very, very much a prominent slapper in the, in the Cole catalog. As I, as I talk about it, I'm thinking more, I'm, I'm thinking how this is such an evolution of um that contributes to Cole's sound uh if you go to Cole's early catalog um I'm talking more of the of the like the early Cole days like the 2009 the sideline story a lot of those albums a lot of those albums have um have you know the, the sound you can really really see the difference like I said from the progression in sound with the way a banger like ATM sounds production wise, it still does fall into that category of chill, um, uh, chill kind of borderline banger trap, uh, trap beats. Um, but I think that Cole, Cole really wanted to really emphasize, have that balance between emphasizing what the, his message wanted to be on this album for a track like ATM that has the substance in the lyrical content when you're talking about money and, and the greed that's associated with, with money. And uh, when we're talking about rap stars like Cole who, who get to a certain point in their career where um, it's we still have that showy kind of display of um, monetary gain um, and gain when it comes down to your materials. Um, so Cole, was really able to kind of find that balance between being able to still, you know, have that have that kind of uh, uh, twist to his conscious rap. Um, in this instance, he's really taking on the uh, narrative of 
be braggadocious rapper, the 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 perspective of the rapper who just wants, wants, wants from the, his material angle and wants to solidify that he needs to keep chasing, you know, because there will never be enough. This is one of the most e more easier things to kind of tackle as a rapper like Cole. I feel like content wise, you'll never go wrong with um, really helping your listener if you want to take this perspective that Cole took and um, really putting that out there that this is still a prevalent prob a problem um, in the mainstream era, not just from the rapper's perspective, even though that kind of gets uh, popped out more than maybe another genre, but it's still a prevalent issue. And we still see young rappers today trying to glorify really that, uh, that showy kind of braggadocious um, attitude. And we've got Kevin's Heart uh, for, for my uh, certified slappers. Kevin's heart was definitely, uh, to me, I, I want to say, I really liked the the twist more with the music video for, for this record. At this time, obviously, uh, Kevin, uh, a Kevin Hart, the real Kevin Hart, uh, we obviously heard about his situation. Cole was really bold for making the decision that he wanted to kind of go through that route and, and kind of shift the perspective um, kind of project his lyricism on another figure. And the fact that Kevin Hart was cool with it to me uh, really speaks volumes to Cole, to, to people really, I guess, looking at Cole as a, a real person. Because, you know, Kevin Hart, with what the real Kevin Hart has been through, in my opinion, I don't think a person that has been through as much as Kevin Hart has been through is going to just let a random a random rapper like Cole not to say that Cole is just a random rapper but random from the perspective that they don't know each other on a personal note they know each other from their you know from their obviously their career catalogs and and the popularity that's associated with that so for Kevin Hart to say yeah I'm cool with that let's do the video let's you know let's let's work this in let's work with each other I think that that's a big uh, a, a big point on both Kevin and on Cole because uh, Kevin had to see that Cole is realistic in his craft and he, he had to see through um, a realistic lens that even though by not knowing Cole personally that you know I can mess with him because I see that he's uh, his he's very serious about his craft in, in the sense of the way how how real his music portrays through uh through his uh through his verses and through through the music and um he has something to stand on I really think that that's something that a lot of people uh a lot of people slept on um i i don't know if kevin hart went to, uh, to this uh, thinking about it during the doing this review i don't know if kevin went on to say certain you know things in interviews or, or what have you if you guys know of anything you can comment in the comments below um, uh, after going through what he went through, but I think that this was a very smart move and it speaks to Cole, to Cole's character as being taken as a real MC, a real young MC. I remember watching the breakdown, uh, the genius breakdown that, that, uh, T minus came out with, uh, for, with genius, uh, all those years ago now. Um, I remember listening uh, to, you know, T minus kind of talk about the Cole production that he was able to uh, work in with Cole for the record. And um, that was uh, a, a ride in itself to be able to watch that video and really get that insight as to how that track was produced. Moving on to brackets. Um, this was definitely to me, we're getting into the stronger portion of the album. Uh, brackets, the lyricism is just strong. Um, leading off with that Richard Pryor, uh, with that Richard Pryor, um, I believe Richard Pryor was the comedian in there, that, that section that they used, that sample. Uh, very genius. I feel like with Richard Pryor leading on with that, with that commentary from his stand up, um, and being a rich, african-american and, and and especially in america having to be taken um having to be taken uh serious um it kind of gives you the notion that cole is very aware that you know with his status um however much money he has you know however much wealth he's accumulated over all these years 
him being able to uh, pull from different areas on this track from the comedic value, I think was very, very, uh, was very, very notable. Uh, it, 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 it gives you, kind of gives you a little bit of a light, a, a light in the, you know, joke, in the joke uh, realm. I feel like you do have to be able to get to a point in your status when you hit somewhere like Cole or Richard Pryor for that matter. Um, as an African-American who's being able to accumulate wealth through their craft, you get to that point where you have to have that ability to uh, laugh at the fact that your, t that your taxes are gonna be crazy. Um, at the same time, Cole is really able to go into that, um, go into that conscious bag and really ask himself questions like, okay, I've accumulated all this money and I've, uh, I've worked hard for it, no doubt. Um, I've been able to transition to the bigger tax bracket, but what does this this really mean for me personally, for me, my community? Um, what value am, is that being transitioned over to when I fork up all this money that I'm paying out for tax? That strong narrative that Cole was able to weave in throughout the ending of the, uh, the end section of this track. We're talking about the mother and the funeral, um, tying in from the, uh, the, 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 uh, victim who was killed, the young man who was killed in this narrative, um, um, obviously not something that's so hard to contemplate um, because we now have more and more on a daily basis uh, we're talking about you know the gun violence that we see uh, when it comes down to this gun violence it's not just in these you know these uh, uh, what they would consider ghetto hooded uh, hooded places where a lot of individuals are coming into contact with more you know of a higher crime rate crime rate but now you're seeing that when you're talking about uh, talking about the 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 amount of the amount of weaponry that we're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis i think cole was very kind of prophetic with this type of lyricism next one we have is once an attic the interlude i feel like this was another strong point on the album we're getting into more of kind of the manifestation of maybe uh, uh that maybe a uh, 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 kill edward of uh, cole's alter ego maybe ran into um or it could also be taken as cole being you know uh being coming up and having to deal with what he's gone through and seeing his uh his mother struggle uh seeing that uh seeing that really uprooted um african-american um uh not obviously not you know limited to african-americans there's plenty of races and individuals who suffer from this but when you really when you really look at it and listen to this album from that point of view it, it does hit home um and i think cole on this record really shines with his storytelling ability his ability to be able to really give you in to the lenses um of um of a young african-american who's uh dealing with this with the uh single parent situation you know dealing with a uh heartbroken uh heartbroken parent who is coping through uh, a, a dangerous coping mechanism of um intoxication and things of of, of, of that nature that will be uh prevalent in the the, the the kid's eyes what the kid is seeing because now you're getting into that cycle now right he's able to really give you this uh fill your head with this imagery and help you to understand this is a struggle that many are dealing millions are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis and some unfortunately don't make it out of that whether it be the parent um uh not making it or the the, the child because the child eventually goes into that that um kind of desperation bag that desperation uh, mechanism right so cole is able to really paint that picture really well which is why once an attic is definitely top tier uh songwriting top tier uh it almost doesn't feel right calling it an interlude but since that's what cole worded it um we, we're gonna go with that but I'm willing to say that Once an Attic is, is is very much a strong, potent, um, one of the strongest in Colts catalog, up there with the Lost Ones and the Love Yours and um, just all those strong storytelling songs. Friends, 
Friends is easily, easily up there with one of the best records on this, on this album. Friends sees Cole um, and kind of a mix of ki ki uh, Kill Edward again, kind of speaking from two different lanes. Kill Edward obviously getting more into that desperation that Kill Edward has fallen through with that voice manipulation and those lines that Kill Edward delivers. Um, a de dealing with his kind of downward spiral, uh, dealing with wanting to continue to further his further his bag, further his uh, his need to kind of fuel just fuel that desire fuel that um that misplaced aggression everything that kill, kill edward may have gone through from like we talked about on once and speaking to his to his uh his, his day once who had been had been really uh you know gelled with him and then you know maybe maybe in a sense in this instance uh he sees this this record with friends as a uh, as a call to action as he, he's got to use his pen to speak to his his ones that he really cares about um in order to help them to prevent going down a similar path like a kill edward and i feel like that sincerity is something that stands alone um on this record uh cole with his with his inflection how he gets how he gets um more and more into that built up cadence that built up delivery and nails it i feel like you can't go wrong with with that and i think that it was well executed from that to the background harmonies the meditate 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 all that i feel like that was very very strong and cole going into really more of that open mic type of aesthetic um on this record so very very strong and then that beat knocking beat knocking strings in the in the background very very beautiful production now the last record that i have on here for my album slappers um i'm gonna go out on a limb and say window pain to me is the best track on this album window pain to me it, it, it's I at the time around that time that 2018 time when I, after I heard this record a couple of times I couldn't get through this record without crying this record was so um it was so emotional that sample first of all that lead in with that with that um very sim that, that, that sympathetic um uh, distorted kind of like screeching effect on that production uh that lead in to kind of make it makes it sound like almost like a, a car is like screeching but that that producer took that kind of sound effect and manipulated it um to be a little bit more um uh palatable but then we have that intro with that sample uh that sample that uh cole threw in there with the child with the young the, the young girl talking about her um uh talking about her her relative who was brutally shot um in, in multiple places um you don't know if 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 the if the child survived um until you really you know listen through the record but i think this record was just one of those perfect cold records um that if you if you don't really pay attention it can go unnoticed the intro from the sample uh cole being in this raw space with that with that instrumental and having to really deliver um i feel like in this instance this is one of those cole records that cole's vocal delivery it just it just works um you can't really i don't see how you can really critique cole's vocal performance really here it's so hard because it was just the rawness that's introduced to this record that really gives it that shine I really feel like this is something that you cannot you cannot sleep on um it's one of those one of those things where uh that emotion just fills throughout the whole track and it makes it flow so smoothly from cole speaking to the little girl uh in in his verse uh to really just th that banging production um and i think that when you get into that outro that outro of this record you really do feel that sense of what cole was trying to portray and obviously this record is still relevant to today um with 
like I said, just the growing amount of violence that we are really seeing in today's world, this record really does hit you. Um, it, it hits you hard. Um, and even more so to hear the testament of the little girl in the Sam you guys debating in the comments what you think is the best record on this uh, on this uh, album. But um, I want to say that all in all, like I said, I got these listed eight slappers. For me, the other records that I didn't include in, uh, Motivate, uh, uh, KOD, I think um, I think those records kind of fell into a, a dangerous pocket on the record when it comes down to sonically. I think the only downfall with this album from Cole is it, it, it kind of fell into the production the production quality did fall into that kind of like uh sleepy lane like where it, it, it's easy to sleep on the production if you're not really a cole fan i don't think this is a good record to start i don't think this is a good album to start if you're not a if you're just getting into cole's work i, I would much more consider you start off from a sideline story and then kind of work your way up that's just my opinion but i think this record did fall into a trap of the production it's kind of sleepy production. These the the, the, the beat choice, they everything kind of sounds very very similar. It sounds the same. I don't know if Cole did that to be strategic or not, but but long story short, everything kind of sounds very it sounds a little bit too similar. And I think records that don't really have that KOD, yeah, the intro, yeah, Cole was, you know, really speaking more of down to that braggadocious rapper type of delivery, but it was very, very easy to kind of snooze on, you know, hit the snooze button on. Cole had some great lines, um, great lines, don't get me wrong, but like I said, I think songs like KOD and Motivate kind of did fall into that trap of um, more of sleeper territory, skip territory for the album. It did feel that that way sonically, unfortunately. 1985, um, the intro to the to the fall off. I feel like this record, in retrospect, I, I I wouldn't argue if you were to say, yo, that's corny. I could agree with you to a very to an extent. I can agree with you if you feel like 1985 is a corny kind of kind of uh play with cole obviously he was going through what he was going through at that time with the rapper and he did the sit down and it's like okay but it doesn't really stand up i think it could have went without it i think if cole wanted to do that separately he could have done that separately but i think ultimately the decision to incorporate that into the album he wanted to you know kind of big bro you know my man's and it's, it's like okay like if you if you want to do that you know look at it from that perspective sure go right ahead you guys um how do you feel about this album what do you feel that it ranks in cole's in, in cole's catalog uh do you feel like this is one of the weaker side of cole do you feel like you agree with the production um leave a comment below if this album still slaps for you three years later i ultimately will say that this is one of cole's better albums and i will strictly say that not really because of production but really more because of lyrical content Cole's able to really show again his ability to pen relevant uh relevant uh lyricism relevant songs that will stand the test of time even if the production is not really up to par guys once again I'm Shuby songwriter and rapper here for Still Slaps thank you so much for checking out this review feel free to click the links below check out the featured producer in this episode we've got more coming for you guys and thank you so much for clicking on and uh staying with me and uh thanks again guys stay safe out there and uh yeah KODJ Cole Still Slaps Peace.